When you couldn't hear me, I said I'd have sex with you. From the back of a back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. When I come home, it's game time. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I doubt our telephone number. If you're going to need it, it's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. On the birthday, it's not the actual birthday, but it is the day we celebrate the birthday of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., now, most people celebrate this day by taking the day off from work. Uh, we don't. We come to work because, uh, well, a couple of reasons. First of all, understand that uh, Dr. King is one of my personal heroes. And that is um, evidenced by um, the fact that many people have complained that when they call this show, they have asked, for example, to be as they say, taking out MLK style or taking out Martin Luther King style, uh, we have refused. That's where I drew the line. Uh, because he is one of my personal heroes. Unlike some of the morons out there that we have called heroes over the years, here is somebody who had something profound to say, and he said it in an era when people were getting their heads shot off, and ultimately he got his shot off. And the fact that it was dangerous, tumultuous times didn't stop him from speaking. And many of the best changes that have happened in this country in my lifetime are a result of Dr. Martin Luther King. Don't interpret anything I say this hour as a diss of Martin Luther King, because it's quite the contrary. Uh, I worship at his altar. I think he was just the best. Fantastic. I um, I have talked about the Martin Luther King holiday on this program many times because, because I do revere Dr. King. And I, uh, I have said more than once, in fact, I did this many years in a row, I pretty much did the same thing on uh, the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. I said on the program that, uh, oh, isn't that wonderful? You turn on the TV and there's all these local news stories about the children, the African-American children getting the day off from school and they're spending their day at the public library or at public events learning more about the history of the civil rights movement and listening to the I Have a Dream speech. And I said, well, isn't that wonderful? But then in the future... One day, it's going to be all different. One day, see, we've already made the holiday a Monday holiday, making it a three-day weekend. So one day, rather than hearing about the children and what they are learning and hearing stories about the legacy of Dr. King, one day you're going to hear commercials. And the commercials are going to be something like this. I did the exact same bit year after year, and many of you may have heard it. I said the following. I said, oh, yes, it's Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, and it's the I Have a Dream sale. That's right. I have a dream of low, low prices on mattresses. You got, you'll be dreaming away on your new half price mattress at the new I Have a Dream sale. Come, I, I did this bit for years. Some people were offended by it. But I didn't do it because I was trying to belittle Dr. King. On the contrary, I did it because I was trying to see into the future. And we already see what's happened with Memorial Day and Veterans Day and Labor Day. We, we see what's happened. 
I mean, do people sit home thinking about the labor movement on Labor Day? Do people sit home honoring the war dead on Memorial Day? Are they out at Costco trying to get, uh, you know, about a bag of 40 frozen burgers so they can grill some up in the backyard? That, I felt, was where the Martin Luther King holiday was going to ultimately go. Now, keep in mind, this was a bit I did on the air. And again, some people were offended by it thinking that I took Dr. King lightly, and then nothing could be further from the truth. I am a major supporter. Always was, always will be. So, uh, and I'm not making this up, but if you have yesterday's copy of the Sunday Los Angeles Times, you'll know I'm not making this up. I am reading from an ad for a mattress retailer. This is a litigious society, so I'm not going to give out the name of the mattress retailer. I'm simply going to tell you it was a mattress retailer, and you can check back from yesterday's uh, Los Angeles Times. I'm not making this up. And here is what it says. I'm reading right from the ad. This is not me doing a bit. This is an actual ad from yesterday's Los Angeles Times. And I ask our African-American listeners to pay attention because I'm going to ask you to respond to this coming up. This is from the Los Angeles Times, the Sunday paper yesterday. The I Have a Dream sale. Celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday with huge savings on all our top-of-the-line sleep sets. Savings you've only dreamed about. Oh, it continues. This is like a whole little supplement to the paper. Get inside. Go inside here, and it's the, uh, now inside they call it the savings you've only dreamed about sale. And the word dreamed is in large letters. We're honoring Martin Luther King with tremendous mattress deals. says here on another page, dreams can come true. Now, your dream may have been that one day man will be judged by the content of his character rather than the color of his skin. No! The dream was get, get a mattress and two free foam pillows for as low as $700. He had a dream. They also have a floor sample blowout sale, savings you've only dreamed about. Oh, yes. The I Have a Dream sale, celebrating Martin Luther King's birthday with huge savings on all of the top-of-the-line sleep sets. Now, the reason I'm reading this to you is I'm just curious, you know... In doing my program, we do not do what some of the other shows do. You have heard of so-called shock jocks who uh, go on the air and try to uh, see how they can shock people by offending one race or another race or what have you. And we just don't play that game here. And you know why we don't play that game? It's not because I'm afraid of the FCC or I'm afraid of what the public is going to say. These are not the reasons. The reasons are very clear and simple. All of you are our customers. You're all potential customers. Every one of you. And blacks and Latinos and Asians and many of the other groups that are frequently singled out for parody, they're our friends. They're our neighbors here in L.A. and they are our customers. And so if I'm going to say something offensive, it's going to be somebody who is not in our target demographic, which men and men of all colors are our customers. We're not going to offend them. We're going to offend the people who are not in the target demographic. That's how I play my game, okay? So if you think I'm going to besmirch my hero, Martin Luther King, on this program... It wouldn't be good for business. Even if somebody thought it was funny, it wouldn't be good for my business. Here is what I am wondering. Is this good for somebody's business? 
the I Have a Dream sale. I'm not making this up. This was yesterday's Los Angeles Times. The I Have a Dream sale for a mattress store. Major retailer. Would this be good business? I mean, let's face it. Black folks' money is as good as anybody else's money. Would black people be attracted to a sale like this or offended by it? So this hour, I'm going to talk only to African Americans on this Martin Luther King Day. I want to find out if, if you saw this ad in yesterday's paper or now that you've heard about the ad, would you go into the store and buy a mattress at the I Have a Dream sale? Or would this insult and offend you? I really want to know. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Like it. Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Yesterday, Los Angeles Times featured an ad supplement or a mattress retailer. It said, the I Have a Dream sale. Celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday with huge savings on all our top-of-the-line sleep sets. Dreams really do come true. Savings you've only dreamed about. When you think about that, would you go to that sale or would you be offended by it? I'm talking this hour only to African American callers at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866 Quinn. On the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, dear. Hi. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'll be shopping at the sale today. <laughs> no? Uh, no, I didn't, couldn't understand actually how anyone would want to do that or feel motivated to go shop for your dream mattress so that I have a dream sale. Now, I, I did that as a joke on the air years ago, and I said that one day it would get to that. But I didn't think I'd still be in radio or alive by the time that happened. I didn't think it was going to happen this fast. <laughs> Seriously, apparently you are a psychic. <laughs> <laughs> If you think about it, the same things happen to Presidents Day as well. People don't even—I don't remember who the presidents are. Jeez. Well, that happened a long time ago. Yeah, who are the presidents? That well, you know why? By the way, you know why they call it Presidents Day? Because they were just trying to lump it together. No, I, it's even—it's even better than that, Quinn. I'm going to tell you why. Um, at one time, when I was way back when I was, you know, there were two separate holidays where I grew up. There was Washington's birthday. And that was on February 22nd. And Lincoln's birthday, that was on February the 12th. Hey. When I was a kid, I was shocked to find that Lincoln's birthday was only observed in the northern states, that the South didn't recognize it as a holiday. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't. I grew up in Tennessee. Interesting. So they ultimately lumped Lincoln's and Washington's birthday together and called it President's Day. Uh, because they couldn't get the South to go along on celebrating Lincoln's birthday. <laughs> I mean, That's after all, uh, can you imagine the guy freed the slaves? How dare he? <laughs> That's can't... true. That's 100% true. So that's how we got President's Day. And uh, Martin Luther King Day, well, already the solemn nature of this day has been uh, turned into uh, a full slate of NBA action <laughs> and the I Have a Dream set. Pretty much it looks like the dream is fading fast. Well, it does. You know, Reverend King, and again, maybe the biggest hero in my life, I, I revered and worshipped him and uh, still uh, admire what he accomplished and the guts he had. Um, you know, think about it. He spent his life working so that everybody can have an equal opportunity for employment. And what is the result? Everybody gets the day off, can watch the NBA all day. <laughs> it's a celebration in a small form. Come on. I don't think that's what he had in mind. <laughs> the, yeah. Washi the Washington Wizards play the Dallas Mavericks at 10 a.m. 
Ay, ay, ay. And now the I Have a Dream sale. It's like, can you give the man a little bit more credit? Give it, people a little bit more credit? It was too much to expect that it was going to be children going to the public library and hearing the I Have a Dream speech on, on cassettes and then, you know, talking about his legacy. You knew that could only last a few years. Very true. Then again, I think it's also society itself has become more jaded to yeah. where they don't even pay attention at all to anything. Who's next? KFC? <laughs> <laughs> for what I'm thinking. (laughs) Come on, this is outrageous. Can't people give the man a little dignity and a little respect? I mean, come on. (laughs) Seriously. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, Dad, I appreciate what you're doing with, I think, waking people up and getting them to take a look at how bad and pathetic that we've become (laughs) it's bad yes thank you quinn you're welcome dad appreciate the call i think i was falling in love with her 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number i'm talking only to african americans this hour it's the martin luther king jr holiday and now you can get mattresses uh, at record low prices yeah, I have a dream sale. I'm not making it up. Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. Uh, Long time listener, first time caller. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, you know, I think the uh, I, I think this is just silly, but I think that, that black people have uh, bigger problems than worrying about the co-opting of Dr. King. I, I think that uh, they, you know, we need to be more competitive. Uh, you know, and who we support, you know, not just voting uh, time and again, 90 percent Democratic, uh, I think becoming more economically competitive and, and basically becoming, you know, more more like do somebody who who cares, who, you know, reads the news and and is is just not not so sensitive to race baiting or, or, or whatever happens like that. Well, I don't disagree that these are laudable goals and things that we should be all working towards. Uh, I do think it's time for people to stop thinking of themselves as victims and to realize the opportunities that do exist and to go out and get them. I did a show about this just a week ago, talking about opportunities that people have and, uh, you know, why people don't go for all of it, everything they've got coming to them. And I had one guy call me and tell me, well, I got a master's degree, but because of the color of my skin, I'll never get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is the guy took a a master's program in human resources. Right. It's like, that's not the fault of racism. That's the the fact that you took a course in a a business or a a field of endeavor that that has very limited uh, ceiling. And you can only go so far in human resources. Why didn't you think of yourself as the CEO or the president of the company? Right. Uh, you want to be the head of the human resources department? That's as high as you aspire? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Right. Yeah, so so it is really about having a plan and then working the plan, not just settling and hoping that somebody's going to take care of you. I agree with that. Having said that, do you think this is an attractive way to attract people into the store? No, I, I don't think. Uh, I, I think it's crass, uh, and I think it's it's just sort of. Uh, oh, it, it's not even creative. It's just. I mean, I'm not suggesting that we go the you know Riverdale Sharpton route and have people pick it and threaten the business. I I think that stuff is counterproductive. Sure. I'm just simply saying, you know, I'm in the marketing business. Right. I sell products. I read commercials. I try to get people to listen to my show in large numbers so that the other advertisers that I don't read their commercials will get more uh, response. And I'm just thinking to myself, if your target audience is the people who revere the Reverend Martin Luther King, Mm -hmm. (laughs) why would you besmirch his memory by taking his words from the most famous speech he ever gave and applying them to a consumer product? Mm. Yeah, that that is a good point. I I thought that... uh that you had about 
alienating potential audiences. So. I don't. I don't think it. Uh, you know, again, I don't believe in the picketing and the boycotting and all that other nonsense that goes on. I. I think that stuff is counterproductive. I really do. It proves nothing. Don Imus is back to work today. Hello, folks. I mean, come on. You're wasting your time. Uh, I. I've moved to the next stage, which is right. how about we figure out what people want, and if, if you know what people's dreams are, fulfill them. Uh, rather than exploiting the the history and legacy of a of a revered figure like that, right? And you know the thing is, the over the years, uh, people people tend to forget how controversial King was. Not even when he was popular, but when he was out of favor, when uh, he opposed the Vietnam War, right? Uh, Johnson and uh, you know, it was just. He, he has been trapped in amber. He is somebody who school children can, uh, you know, recite the first few words of the speech, but they but they don't know what he stood for. And and I think the thing is is that he's been whitewashed so that people don't have to think about him critically. I mean, if you if you were you know engaging him in first grade, thinking that oh well you know he was trying to basically upend the country and and the the status quo, uh, that might get kids thinking. And I don't think you want to get them thinking if you're trying to make, you know, have them uh, in a, a factory that, that you know, so a lot of schools are. Yeah, well, I, I don't happen to think that uh, Dr. King uh, had in mind things like reparations or boycotting businesses. I think what he had in mind was uh, raising everyone's consciousness and making them aware of, uh, first of all, what a resource we have in all Americans, and uh, secondly, uh, for people to aspire to something bigger. Mm. And I think those are the most important messages he imparted. And uh, I, I think this idea, he's been, I mean, his name has been perverted and it's been used politically in every possible way. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly believe that to his thinking was closer to yours than it is of the average boycotter or picketer out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he had, I mean, he had a lot more to lose uh, than than the kind of charlatans who are out now. I mean, it's just sort of, oh, let me get on, let me get on the media, let me let me get on TV. Uh, you know, the, the fact that you're you're able you're able to say uncle or or cry racism so much and and get so many windfalls from it this speaks how how much racism has uh receded these days i mean it's it's nothing compared to what my my grandfather would have had to go through i it, you know, and to pretend that it is 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 uh, insulting to the people like dr right. king who sacrificed themselves and now it's time for african americans to take advantage of the opportunities they have Yep. And to continue to work for the small injustices that still exist, comparatively small, when you look back at the fact that there was a time when blacks were three-fifths human, according to the Constitution. Right. Uh, there was a time when we uh, when slavery was the accepted way of doing business in this country. There was a time when there were separate schools for blacks and whites. Uh, there was a time when black people couldn't stay in certain hotels or eat at certain restaurants. That's all gone. Right. So I think now it's time for black people to say, you know what? I could run for president. I could right. be Oprah Winfrey. I could right. be Michael Jordan. I could, you know, <laughs> these are people who took full advantages of the opportunities that are available to them. Sure. And and the uh, the interesting thing too is like with, in the case of an Oprah, uh, you know, she had what well, was she abused and had right? you know, didn't have come from a. Well, yeah, as a young child, I, I, I she, if I recall the story about Oprah, she was raped and impregnated at thirteen or something like that. Yeah, and and, and, and what did she now. do? What did she do? Oh, she makes three hundred million dollars a year. She has her own television network coming soon. Her own television network. I mean, uh, you know what? I I I you know I'm a broadcaster. I admire and respect Oprah Winfrey. Now, of course. Do I care about all that chick nonsense they talk about in the afternoon? Couldn't care less. But you see, I see every broadcaster on two levels. I see the content of what they put out, but I also see their business model. Right. And, and she, she's a businesswoman. She she has her market. You have yours. Brilliant. And the, the pie is big enough for both of you. Brilliant. And, uh, you know, again, someone uh, everybody in the broadcasting business can learn from. But I also think African-Americans stand to learn a lot from Oprah. Mm-hmm. 
She didn't stand there with a hand out. She went out and took every opportunity there was available. Uh, the one time she ever uh, benefited uh, that I know of from legislation, she she uh, got an affirmative action anchor job on the news in Baltimore when she was starting her career, and then she took it from there. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think it's fantastic. Right, right. I mean, that's that's just, yeah, totally. All right, Robert, i got to take a break, but I thank you very much. I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. If you're just tuning in, uh, it's Martin Luther King's birthday. At least it's the holiday celebrating the birthday of Martin Luther King. And I am looking at a, an advertising supplement from yesterday's Los Angeles Times advertising the big I Have a Dream sale. The ad says, celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday with huge savings on all but all our top-of-the-line sleep sets. Savings you've only dreamed about. And then when you go inside the supplement, I mean, this again, you can check this out. I am not making this up. This is yesterday's Los Angeles Times. Again, it says savings you've only dreamed about. We're honoring Martin Luther King with tremendous mattress deals. It says the dreams can come true. The dream is not that everybody would be considered equally valuable to society. The dream is sleep sets at less than half price. You gotta be kidding me. I'm talking only to African Americans this hour to find out, does this ad offend you? Would it attract you into the store because it mentions Martin Luther King? Would it offend you and say, make you say, I don't want to go in there? I- I'm really curious. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom like it Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. The I Have a Dream sale. A major mattress retailer advertised this sale in the Los Angeles Times for Martin Luther King Day, which is not necessarily his birthday, depending on what year it is. But uh, I'm wondering if you... um, if you are offended by this, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Uh, hello. Tony. Yes. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, Tony. All right. Well, you know, it seems to me as though it's just so everything is so nonchalant now with the holiday. And... Uh, you know, for those of us that have to work, it's like uh, just another day to uh, get some overtime money. Yeah, I but, mean, uh, if you were home today, would you be at the library researching the civil rights movement, or would you be uh, doing what uh, most people are doing on the day off today? Definitely doing what most people are doing, kicking back, probably watching a few basketball games and Every now and then, I might flip a channel, whatever. If something catches my interest as far as the history goes on the I Have a Dream speech, I will watch it. But it just seems to me as though it's another day to basically, uh, you know, you go to work, but no one talks about it. I mean, I remember a few years ago when they first made it into a holiday, it was a big point to, okay, let's take Martin Luther King Day off. And like you said, it's it's just becoming another thing now. So yeah, I don't I don't, I, I don't get it. Okay, I I don't get it. I don't understand. Um, you, you know, it's just like President's Day. Who goes to work? The people who work on President's Day, who goes to work and says, "That eh, George Washington, he was something, huh?" <laughs> Right. On Memorial Day, how many people take time out from toasting hamburger buns to go, whoa, go, the people who died for our country. Isn't that fantastic? What, that's so brave. Exactly. And come on. I mean, you got a point there. And I mean, to advertise what that furniture place is doing, uh, yeah, it is a slap in the face uh, to a very big extent. Um I wouldn't want to shop there if I, you know, saw something like that because the point you made earlier about that speech, it was very important. 
and I, thought, I think that Dr. King not only spoke to African American people, like you said, he spoke to Americans in general, period. Um, and he was very uplifting for, I think, the American people. And like you said, you know, if this nation changes its way of thinking and treats everybody just, just based on their character, it would make this country stronger, period. I mean, and think about it. Does anybody pay attention to Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton, the way they paid attention to Dr. King? Come on. Okay. Not at all. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. And these guys are no replacement, and, and they try to portray themselves as being in his footsteps, but come on. Right. These guys are showboaters. They are attention whores. Mm. Uh, they are poverty pimps. There's no doubt they are. <laughs> okay. You know, and Dr. King was uh, so much head, o head over heels better than any of these guys in terms of getting everybody's attention and being articulate mm -hmm. and, okay. and, 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 and really having the respect of the whole country. Every time I see Al Sharpton, I'm imagining him picketing, you know, some TV show or some radio station. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> Who's paying attention anymore? The, the message, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it's not, it's just a big difference. It's not nearly the same. And, um, you know, like you said, the, the time period uh, that Dr. King did all this, um, and like you said, the way he was able to articulate himself, it was a phenomenal, uh, I mean, how can you, when you listen to him talk, how can you not get the message? You know, how can you not get it? How can you not want to participate and believing in that dream that he had to try and make this country uh, better. Well, and I, I think the proof is in the pudding. You're never going to have a Reverend Al Sharpton day. Okay. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Though. That's right. Well, it man, thank you, uh, Tom. I've been listening to you for a while, man. Uh, you're on point. Uh, you keep it 100, man. Thank you so much, Tony. All right. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello here to Dion on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Oh, uh, well, you know, you got my blood boiling right now because, for one, you know, to make this a topic is just stupid because they have Labor Day, Memorial Day, President's Day, and you're making it a big deal just because there's I Have a Dream Martin Luther King sale. Wait a minute. I never wait a minute. Don't misinterpret what I said. I never said there shouldn't be a Martin Luther King holiday. No, no, no. Okay. I, I'm I sorry. never I, and I said that the, how much I revere Dr. King. This ad it was, should be offensive to anybody who revered Dr. King. Okay. I messed up. I'm sorry. My bad because I know you will check me. But this is what I want to say. They have holidays and they have the sales for the holidays, like the Labor Day sale, President's Day sale, right? Have you or have you not seen these? Oh, well, well, of course I've seen them. That's why I made this point years ago that one day uh, the Martin Luther King holiday would not be a day of learning and uh, parades and uh, b b b seminars and playing back the speech. One day it would be a day to have sales on items at the mall. And and that day came a lot sooner than I expected. <laughs> you said that? <laughs> Years ago, I said there would be an I Have a Dream sale. <laughs> can't even be mad at and, you. And then I opened, up, I opened up the paper yesterday, and it fell out of my L.A. Times. There it is, the I Have a Dream sale. Somebody did it. Tom said he, he said this years ago that, you know, people are just making such a mockery of everything that one of these days is just going to fall out of... You know, it's just going to happen. I'm going to have a, I have a dream sale. And then he came sooner than he thought. Yes. <laughs> okay, I still love you. I'm sorry. So you didn't even know what I was talking about. You were all ready to be angry at me. <laughs> you know, every time I call you, I'm so ready, right? Yeah. And then, you know, I just change. I change because you are like my dad. My mm -hmm. dad, will he'll work on the negatives, but at the same time, they're negative truths. And no one wants to harp on that, but at the same time, you know, people are being entertained by this 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 uh, Paris Hilton deal and this Britney Hilton, Hilton uh, Britney uh, Spears, unfortunate, and 
here you are just saying, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So, hey, more power to you, Paul. There Tom. we go. <laughs> you can't right hate this. me, dear. You can't do it. You keep trying. You can't do it. Oh, God. Well, you have a good one. Blow me up. Um, uh, What's that one? Uh the one with Kobe in it. Oh, Kobe style. Sure I can. For MLK Day. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm talking to African Americans only about a supplement I saw. It was an advertising supplement to the L.A. Times. It suggested that a mattress store was having the I Have a Dream sale. Dwyer on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? First time caller, long time listener. Yes. All right. So anyways, um, about that mattress thing, right? Me personally, I'm not offended because that's America. America's a big fat we split everything. So, you know, <laughs> your holiday are getting exploited. I mean, we just get over the holiday season. <laughs> so that's my point about that. But the other uh, <clears throat> thing I wanted to tell you, Tom, is as far as black people being victims and everything, I think that there's a generational gap between um, people who think that way exactly because, you know, I'm 31, right? So, like, my parents and my grandparents are more emotionally attached to the injustices that black people faced when they were growing up because it was more blatant stuff, you know? So, you know, my generation should be more economically driven and things like that, but also at the same time, we don't have that blatant racism, you know? My grandfather fought in World War II. He, was, he grew up in the South where it was, like, white and colored only, you know? So maybe it has a different effect on different generations. And as we keep going forward and hopefully keep progressing here, um, the younger generation will break that chain of victimization. You know? That's yeah. really what's going well, on. Well, I'd like to see that happen. I really would. I would, too. I mean, but that's just, I think there's a big generational thing. And as far as Jesse and Al Sharpton, I definitely agree with you. You know, they, you know they're poverty uh, or pimps. Is that what you said? No, poverty pimps. That's right. So anyways, that's, that's, I said my little two cents, Tom, so you can blow me up. I'll blow you up, Dwyer. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking only to African Americans this hour. 1-800-5800-866. Alfred, hello. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Oh, great, great. Well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, I'm working today. Uh, I'm glad to be working today. Um, working for my own business, trying to make it work. I'm not offended. Uh, I'm not offended when they show the cherry tree and George Washington chopped it down, and I'm not offended with this. I, I know what age I was when Dr. King was slain. I can vividly remember the reaction of the adults in the neighborhood. And I think that on one hand we want to assimilate, we want to move on well this is a part of it and yeah it's about time uh you can't be offended about being a part of uh you have to you have to take it for what it is um i just feel that it shows that we're closer to being accepted in that regard we need to accept it ourselves well i i see what you're saying and uh you know i i more than ever i i do believe that we all have common goals, common feelings, and while there is racism in this country, you know, it's not like what it was when the two, three, four generations ago. It's just not. No. But I'm not offended in, in that advertisement. Uh, 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 I have a dream sale. Because, again, uh, um, I, I know and from what I understand of Dr. King, and, uh, I, again, I, I remember it wasn't an adult. Uh, I was no more than uh, seven, eight years old. But again, I felt it. And uh, at this point, uh, we need to move on. Uh, you need to know what's an insult and what isn't. All right, Alfred, good points. Thank you very much for the call. The Tom Likas Show.